Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering 5th Grade Math. Here we're subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. And here the problems are just a little bit more challenging because we'll have to manipulate both of the fractions in the problem in order to get a common denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see the parallels that we have with the adding subtractions uh, that we did uh, before. So what we're going to have then is what if we have the fraction 5 sixth and we're subtracting from it the fraction 1 fourth. We want to subtract these guys, but we see right away that we do not have a common denominator. We have a 6 and we have a 4. Now, the next thing we look at is, hey, can we transform one of these fractions, for instance this one, to put a 6 on the bottom of it? Well, I can't multiply 4 times anything to give me 6, so I can't really do that. I also can't just transform this fraction to make it match this one because I can't multiply 6 by anything to give me 4. So the first thing you do is always try to do the simple thing. See if you can just change one of those fractions to give you the common denominator of the other one. right? But we can't do that in this case because we, we've chosen these denominators so that you can't just do it by changing one of those fractions. So then we start looking for what would be a good common denominator between these two fractions. We clearly need to transform um, these fractions, but what should we use as a common denominator? Now it's a little bit of technique here. You know, it's a little bit of technique here, but what you do is you look at 6 and 4 and you start going up and you start in your head and you start trying to figure out what number can I choose that will allow me to divide 6 into it and also 4 into it. Because what I need to do is say 4 times something is going to give me that number and 6, the other fraction, times something will give me the same number. I need to find a common number that will be divisible by 6 and 4. So we start going mentally up. Well. 6 isn't going to work, can't divide that by 4. 8's not going to work, can't divide that by 6. Okay, then you go to 10. And you just kind of mentally go up in your head, what do you think would be divisible by 6 and 4? Eventually I'm going to get to 12. 12 can be divided by 6, and 12 can also be divided by 4. So I single out that and I say I'm going to use 12 as my common denominator. Now in order to do that, I need to multiply this fraction by 3 on the top and the bottom, because that'll give me 12. And down here, I will have 3 twelfths for this fraction. 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12. All right? And then I go and do the same thing up here. I say 5 6. Now, I obviously want to get a common denominator of 12. So I need to multiply this times 2 and this times 2, because 6 times 2 is 12. So then what I will have on the top will be 10, and on the bottom will be 12. So now you see what I've done. I have changed this fraction into 3 twelfths and I've changed this fraction into 10 twelfths. I haven't changed what this fraction represents over here or what this one represents over here. These are equivalent, right? But they look different and they have a common denominator. So now I'm able to do the subtraction. I just put a minus sign here, draw a line, and say I'm going to subtract. And then I know now I have a common denominator, so 12 just stays on the bottom. And on the top, 10 minus 3 is going to give me 7. So the answer is 7 twelfths. I always try to see if I can simplify this any further. I can't divide top and bottom by anything to simplify this anymore. So 7 twelfths is the answer. I want to make sure you know that in this case, we happen to pick uh, 12 as our common denominator. And that was the number we were trying to multiply these denominators with to get us 12 as a common denominator. But there are plenty of other numbers you could choose as a common denominator. You're not limited to one of them. You could pick whatever you want for a common denominator. For instance, the number 24, all right? 6 times 4 will give me 24. Uh, 4 times 6 will give me 24. So I could have transformed those fractions so that I had a 24 on the bottom and a 24 on the bottom up there. And if I had done that, then I would subtract it. I would be getting a different answer here, but then I would be able to simplify